On January 24th, 1935, the term a can of beer became a staple of our American lexicon. That's the day the Gottfried Kruger Brewing Company of Newark, New Jersey, first offered its finest beer and cream ale in a 12 ounce, 12 ounce tin can. Thousands were handed out in a promotional campaign just to see if it would work. Well, it did, obviously. And after a delay in production during World War II, for obvious reasons, the cans became aluminum in 1958. Production picked up back in 1962. And by 1969, sales of canned beer outdid bottles for the very first time. Well, today marks the 87th anniversary of that first beer can. So to celebrate, we thought we'd take you back to the spring of 2018 and take you inside what is likely the largest collection of beer cans in Idaho in today's rusty 208 redial. <laughs> Out back, behind his rather modest house in Eagle, Joe Prin, a modest man. There was a pole barn hill here, so I kind of just enclosed it. With a modest affinity for malted beverages. Oh, yeah. Just in case I forget about this. Has a rather. Welcome to Beer Vana. Immodest collection <laughs> in his outbuilding. See, I told you you'd say that. <laughs> Joe says he's stockpiled and stacked somewhere near 11,000 beer cans. That's a lot of lagers, an abundance of ales, and a Schlitz load of stouts. That wall ends at C. Uh, oh, yeah, it, it keeps going. There's another room. It, it keeps going. <laughs> sure, the collection is impressive, but so is the presentation. It's the only way to keep track of it. Alphabetical, chronological, by brand and brewery. And when he ran out of wall space, he went to the rafters. Everything's on wheels. And I've... then roll around racks. Joe says he has a can from every state in the union. Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. From A1 to Zodiac. Even all the Idaho cans. Edge Brewing, McCall Brewing, Slanted Rock. He can go from generic to almost there to novelty TV cans. Oh, let's see, J, 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 R. Even the every collector has to have Billy Beer. Yes. The first beer can? Yeah, he's got that too. Uh, Kruger's Cream Ale. That was the one that uh, the can companies, they talked this brewery into... Uh, trying this in 1935, and it was a tremendous success. Kind of like Joe. Yeah. <laughs> Since he started this quest for Metal Majesty back in the 70s. Up until some that I added yesterday. You added some yesterday? Yeah, some brand new ones. He admits he has a problem. Yeah, but it's manageable at this time. <laughs> Joe knows of no one else in Idaho with this kind of collection. I, I think I can probably claim that title, but uh, I don't know if it's one to be proud of. <laughs> but there are thousands more around the country. They even have their own club and monthly magazine, of which Joe is the editor. Here they track auction prices of recent tin treasures. That can sold for 37,000. That one was 37,000. This one was 35,000. Joe also insists while all 11,000 of these vessels are vacant, he didn't drain them all. I've had my fair share of them. I did. Can't you tell? <laughs> I've had my fair share of them. It said Colt 45 works every time, but Joe says he's worked about as many as he can into this old barn. I'm done now. This, this is it. This is not going to get bigger. This is it. My goldfish bowl can't get any bigger. A bowl, Joe says, is only worth its weight in aluminum, but if measured in memories, priceless. There's a story behind every one of these. And the story goes, at least it went this way when we spoke with Joe back in 2018, he was going to start paring down his collection since his kids don't really have an interest in it. So has he? Not exactly. Yeah, that's not going so good. No? <laughs> they, they keep finding me. <laughs> oh, do they? I've, I, I have uh, reduced the, uh, the, the quantity a little bit, but... Uh, and I, I, no, no, it's it's not working out real well yet. But that's the plan for the future. Yes, <laughs> the future, the distant future. Yeah. But there is a a big community of beer can aficionados out there. Oh yes, it's huge. There's um, there's three national organizations: the the Brewery Collectibles Club of America, which we put out this magazine. Uh, I happen to be the uh, national editor right now. Uh, probably total collectors are somewhere around 10,000. Suffice to say, you're going to keep going with this, right? I am for a while. Uh, okay. Yes, yes. Uh, I think the, the reduction plan is still fully in effect. And uh, so someday I do hope to reduce that down because there's only so many of these that will fit in my urn with me at some point in time. 
They don't break down very easily. Not as easily as that. Yeah, exactly. Now the old ones rust away. <laughs> That's true. That's true. All right. Well, happy beer can appreciation day. You too. I will be uh, appreciating that uh, cylindrical device uh, a little bit later this afternoon. Good plan. <laughs> like many others will, I'm sure. Yep. Who don't even know what day it is. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Nor does it matter. Joe says he tried to upgrade his collection in quality, not necessarily in quantity over the years, trading a hundred or so here and there for one good specimen, but then trading one of his good specimens for hundreds of others. So which is why his brewery, brewery in collection, as he calls it, is still hovering around 11,000 cans. At least that's what he tells his wife.